All right, then I'm going to call the uh, meeting of the El Segundo Unified School District Board of Education to order at two o'clock. And um, Alec Baudel is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Uh, no action was taken in closed session today. And uh, for our agenda hearing period, I have one public communication that I will read. I am grateful to have been part of the grading committee process and appreciated the value of each voice and the thoughtful, dedicated discussion which took place. The objective was and is to always serve our students. Each campus within ESUSD has a long tradition of rising to every occasion, and the situation we currently face is no different. The heart, dedication, experience, and expertise of our teachers and counselors is unmet. There was clear and quick collaboration and articulation which encouraged participation from every grade level. The policies adopted by the ESUSD school board supports all students and allows their teachers and support staff to move forward in continuing their education through this locally and globally uncertain time. It is a privilege to serve in this exceptional district. Thank you, Stephanie Burns, El Segundo High School Council. Thank you, Stephanie, really appreciate the supportive words. Um, Next, we'll move on to special presentation. So, Ella, if you could give us your report. Good afternoon. <laughs> you guys, I hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. Uh, just a couple of things. Online testing for AP exams have begun. And lastly, seniors picked up their caps and gowns yesterday. That is all. Okay. Then, um, we have an update from the El Segundo Education Foundation. Um, is Carol Persick going to be here, Dr. Moore? Will you give uh, it? Carol is in a town hall, and so we're working with Neil Cadman to see if we can um, uh, get him uh, approved to join us. So if we could move on to the next presentation and come back to Neil. He'll be joining us shortly. Okay. Next, we have the recognition of the Classified Employees of the Year, Dr. Moore. Yes, at this time, I'd like to call on Dr. Dylan Ferris. We're very excited uh, to share uh, information as it relates to our Classified Employees of the Year. We feel a little remiss in the fact that we were not able to get out and really celebrate them at our school sites, but these are really our unsung heroes in our district. And they are the people who keep the operation moving forward and supporting our students through whether it's providing clean building that's disinfected or supporting students with uh, follow up from the teacher as an instructional aid or doing that clerical work in the offices. So, Dr. Fuller. Well, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, President Nishime, uh, members of the board, Dr. Moore, and all of our folks watching from home. Uh, last week, we celebrated Teacher Appreciation Week, and later this month, we'll be celebrating our Classified Staff Appreciation Week. Uh, as Dr. Moore said, these are all of the people that support our instructional program, from our custodians to the people working in the offices to our instructional aides in the classroom. Uh, our board will be taking action later on in the meeting on a resolution to honor Classified uh, Employee Week. And now we take a moment to celebrate just a few of our classified employees of the year. Uh, each year around this time, we accept nominations from staff, students, and parents for our staff members they'd like to see recognized. And we select one employee from each of five groups. 
Um, we get a ton of nominations, and we are super proud of all of them, but today we are going to honor five folks. Uh, there are a few people who are not able to attend, but I'm sure they're going to be logging in later to watch the replay. So um, I'm happy to start out recognizing uh, just a couple of people, starting with um, Ms. Brenda Gronhagen. Ms. Brenda Gronhagen is an, is an instructional aide at El Segundo High School. Um, she's been working as an aide since 1999 in El Segundo Unified School District. And here's uh, one of the things that her nominators said about her. Uh, teacher Craig Gast reported that Brenda is a fabulous teacher's aide who works well with students every day. She's been shown tremendous respect by the students she works with. She's caring and respectful and goes above and beyond every single day. She comes in on her own time to figure out the best way to support students and generally make sure everything runs smoothly. I've never had an aide who cares more about the work than she does. She has been amazing and a true blessing to have her in his classroom. So uh, we congratulate Ms. Brenda Gronhagen. And again, as with everyone, we're looking forward to a time when we might be able to celebrate in person. Um, but for now, we're happy to celebrate her in this forum. Um, in food services, we recognize and honor Ms. Estela Acevedo. Uh, she's also been with us for quite a while, 20 years, and also going to unify a school district. She works in the kitchen at Richmond Street Elementary School. Um, and here is what her supervisor, Kim Linz, reports about her. Um, Estela is a welcome and warm face for Richmond students when they enter the cafeteria. She knows students by name and works with fellow staff members to create a positive environment. She has an excellent work ethic and enthusiasm for her position every day. She ensures meals meet the technical serving requirements and meshes that with an understanding of the kinds of food students enjoy. Estella is a wonderful representative for the Food Services Department. And with that, we congratulate Ms. Estella Acevedo. Um, moving on, we have a few folks that are able to join us and they're in the room with us now. And uh, I am going to start with Mr. Ruben Mora. And what we'll have happen here is after I read comments on these individuals, we'll have them unmute themselves and open their video, and then we'll allow them to say a few words. So welcome, Ruben. I'm glad you're able to, to, to make it today. And here are just Hi a few. There. Thank you. Uh, here's a few things about Ruben. Ruben is a, a lead custodian at Center Street Elementary School. And uh, here are a few comments about Ruben. This, com this one comes from parent Cheryl Smith. For my first day on the job, Ruben has been a fantastic employee to work with. He is dedicated to his position, helpful, always willing to stop what he is doing and assist me with the project and does so with a smile. When I have brought a challenge up to him, he never turns away and often comes up with a better solution than what I had in mind. Ruben is an asset not only to Center Street, but to ESUSD as a whole. Um, Assistant Principal Luke Oleshek also nominates you, by the way. He writes, Ruben is always there for parents, students, and staff. He takes pride in his work and is friendly and willing to pitch it in a helping hand. He is awesome to work with and will do anything to make sure school events are supported. His can-do attitude makes him an asset to our school and students. I'll do one more. Uh, Ms. Monahan, Dr. Monahan. Uh, writes, Ruben Mora is a positive force on our staff. He's appreciated by our community for his excellent work ethic and can-do attitude. When the, CS, when the Center Street School lead was unable to work, he jumped right in and took on a leadership role. Ruben is universally liked and respected by staff, and he can always be relied on to go the extra mile for students, families, and staff at Center Street. Congratulations, Ruben. If you'd like to say a few words, now's your moment. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, and we're happy to celebrate you. And uh, again, we'll look forward to a time when we can celebrate in person. And uh, with that, we're going to transition to our next candidate. And uh, in the area of student support services, we're happy to honor Mr. Collar Carlos Gutierrez, who works in the IT department. He's a school technology specialist, been with us since 2014. And uh, I have several letters of support for Carlos. Carlos, if you want to, you can unmute yourself and open your video now if you like. And I'll just read yeah. a few words about Carlos. Uh, the first one comes from Mr. Sean Bramlin. One of Carlos' greatest traits is that he is extremely thoughtful and dedicated. As the instructional technology coach, I meet with Carlos regularly to collaborate 
and support teachers and students in the area of technology integration. Carlos ensures that technology is working correctly and efficiently for teachers and students so they can be innovative. He is also happy to work with parents to address questions and, and concerns. Overall, Carlos goes above and beyond to meet the needs and be responsive to all stakeholders. He wrote a ton more, but I'm just giving you a little piece right now. So, um, And from uh, Danny Gauna, the Executive Director of Instructional Technology, he writes, Mr. Gutierrez's professionalism is nothing short of outstanding. His friendliness and calm demeanor provides a safe work environment. No one is afraid to ask questions. He always arrives with a smile on his face and a happy greeting. Mr. Gutierrez communicates effectively with everyone. His position requires him to work many nights and weekends, often taking him away from his family. Yet Mr. Gutierrez always maintains a cheerful attitude and delivers high quality work. I cannot imagine a candidate more deserving of this honor. Congratulations, Carlos. I concur with everything that's been said. And if you'd like to say a few words, now is your moment. Yes, good afternoon, President Nishime, members of the board and Dr. Moore. Um, I am humbled by this award. Uh, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. Uh, I truly enjoy working for this fabulous district and like, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm just speechless, but definitely with a big smile in my face. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Very deserving. All right. We have one more. Last but not least, um, we have Ms. Rosie Reyes from Richmond Street Elementary School as our office staff person of the year. She's a senior office assistant at Richmond Street, and uh, she is definitely a student, staff, and family favorite. She's one of the folks that got more nominations than anybody in the entire district when we did this process. And uh, again, I'll just read a couple of uh, comments. Uh, Ms. Rosie greets our whole family every single morning with a huge smile and lovely conversation. I know my son is safe at school because Ms. Rosie looks out for him. Her presence has made our time at Richmond Street School an experience we will never forget. We see her dedication to our school every day with all whom she takes care of, children and adults. She's a sweet soul and deserves to be recognized by the community and her peers. Um, Dr. Alice Lee wrote, Rosie is an incredible office assistant and, and is a welcoming, warm, and helpful first face you see when you walk into the Richmond Street School office. Students, teachers, and parents appreciate her. She has a great sense of humor, which is essential in a school setting. She is welcoming to everyone and anyone who walks into the school. Her smile and personality truly brighten up the place. She is a hardworking, beautiful person, and we are so proud of her in receiving this award. And I, I don't see Rosie here, uh, but we want to offer our congratulations. And uh, with that, I would like to congratulate all of our candidates and just reiterate how proud we are of all of our classified staff and also going to unify. Thank you. Um, Dr. Mar, I thought I saw Neil Cadman earlier, but I, I don't see him now. Um, well. Yeah, it. They're, they're working on it. We had sent the uh, uh, invitation initially to Carol Perstick. Oh, there's Neil. There's Neil. Came on. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I see Rosie Reyes is here. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't, want to, I don't want to pass by her. So I just, I just yeah. saw her flash on the screen. So Rosie, if you're able to, if, I'm sorry. If you don't mind, Rosie, if you're able to, if you can uh, unmute and show us your face, you're welcome to say a few words. We already uh, talked about how wonderful you are. Just give her a second to see if she can navigate the, the mic. <laughs> Oh, well, maybe not. Um, thank you. <laughs> I tried. All right. Well, I uh, guess we'll move on then to the Ed Foundation um, update from Neil Cadman. Can't hear you, Neil. Well, why, why don't we have you um, log out and come back in and we'll move ahead. 
with um, the AVID, AVID uh, presentation. Dr. Moore? Yes, um, we have a very innovative presentation today. Uh, I'm going to kick it off. So our El Segundo High School has a well-established, fabulous, AVID program that we're extremely proud of that's been in place. And uh, our AVID team has uh, prepared a video for us today. So we're gonna go into the video and then transition into questions and answers with our AVID team led by Logan Fox and Bronca Savet. So Danny, we'll turn it over to you for the video. Good afternoon, President Nishime, Governing Board Members, Dr. Moore, Ms. Adams, Ella, and to those of you that are tuning in today. My name is Dr. Logan Fox. I'm the Assistant Principal at El Segundo High School and also our AVID District Director. Today you will see a brief PowerPoint followed by an awesome video that shares information about our AVID program and celebrates our amazing students. It's important to note on the first slide, the gold letters that say Emerging Schoolwide Program because that is a title that we have earned this school year based on our accomplishments last year. So we moved up one level in our certification status. Our mission continues to be to close the achievement gap by preparing all students for college and careers. Please note some of our highlights. I definitely want to emphasize the second bullet that shows that more than half of our seniors earned a 3.5 GPA or higher their fall, this fall semester, and we're so excited because it is the highest since our program's induction. Good evening, I'm Bronca Tsvage, the AVID coordinator and intervention specialist at El Segundo High School. The AVID tools and strategies in place are school-wide and all contribute to helping every student become cognitively, personally, and interpersonally competent, as outlined in our district's graduate profile. Our program's goals for next year are to continue to encourage and support students to take rigorous courses, to help build their analytical skills, and to expand our school-wide support of all aspects of the college application process. We are so very grateful for your past support, your continued support of the AVID program, and we thank you very much for that. It's now my pleasure to introduce the best part of our presentation and the reason we're all here our AVID teachers and students. The AVID 9 class advanced in the area of empowered and continuous learner. Not only did they successfully complete their first high school semester, they then took on the challenge of distance learning. They took with them the tools they acquired in the first semester and put them to use while learning at home. AVID has helped me to successfully make the transition from middle school to high school. I have advanced in my organization skills and demonstrated growth as a thinker and learner. In addition to that, AVID has assisted with the successful completion of all my classes so that I'm prepared for my sophomore year. For me, AVID was like a lifeline. At the beginning of the first semester, I started with a GPA below a 3.0, and I was not happy with that. I had no idea how to fix it. I struggled with homework and managing stress. The AVID tutorials and study hut visits helped me a lot. They gave me a new and greater understanding about what school means to me. My AVID class motivated me to do better. I finished first semester very close to a 4.0. I'm so glad I got to be part of AVID this year, especially because of all the opportunities I've been given. For example, I got to work at TLC, the after-school daycare program. I really loved being able to take care of kids while also connecting with them. I was also really inspired by some historical figures like Whitney Houston, how she portrayed imperfection in her fame. I thought that was really cool. And I guess my favorite thing about this year was learning about school spirit and especially how lucky we are here at El Segundo. And I think I've grown both socially and academically. Socially in that I have more friends and I'm more confident, and academically in that my GPA and my grades have improved greatly since last year. The binder checks helped me academically by organizing all of my assignments, and that really helped me to know when things are due, and also the planner checks also helped me know when things are due and stay on top of my assignments. And I would also help me socially by having games that we played, and one of my favorite games was the blanket game. There are a number of people on a blanket, and you try to turn that blanket over, 
and that really helped people communicate to get to a vote and also help some people to speak up as leaders. This year in AVID 10, we really focused our efforts using our graduate profile and higher level thinking. So for example, we have um, developed higher level questioning in regards to career and college that we want to explore in our future, as well as implemented new writing strategies to improve for our ACT and SAT. We've had such a beautiful year of growth, and even though distance learning is a little bit different, it's challenged us to continue our creative process as learners, and we hope you enjoy. This year, we all grew a lot, and we've all improved since the beginning of the school year. Uh, me, personally, I've been getting more organized with all my schoolwork and where I should be putting it. And it's been showing better results as I turn more stuff in this year. This year, I had goals set in place for me to achieve, and I stuck through with them all throughout this year. AVID has helped me improve on my scores and has helped me solidify my future plans. Last year, I was shy and did not put much effort into school, but because of AVID, my scores are as high as they have ever been, and I am a very outgoing person who is not afraid to raise their hand in class. Overall, AVID has helped me be a better person and a better student who works hard to achieve the best things possible. In our three years in AVID, we have focused on our independence. Year three sees us evolving both in terms of the AVID goals of college preparedness and skill building, as well as our El Segundo graduate profile of becoming responsible, self-directed, and resilient individuals. This sees us researching our colleges, with our particular um, individual tastes in mind. In AVID, I love doing college research. It helps me find out what I want in a college and will help me out for this fall semester when I look to apply for colleges. AVID has advanced my independence by pushing me to do college research and giving me more, more options to what I want in a college. Jim Whalen, senior AVID teacher, class of 2020, a kind, great group of, uh, of seniors. We can do it, they did it. 50% roughly go into a four year, 50% go into a two year. I'm gonna turn it over to two of our finest, Destiny Campbell going to Whittier College on full scholarship, and Ray Silva going to Grand Canyon University. Thank you. Since I was in sixth grade, I've been to eight different schools. Now, when you say that, it's like eight different schools. My dad was in the army, so I was a military brat. Each time I moved to a different area, not only in the United States, but it has been outside the country as far as the Korea and Germany and Japan, um, I made sure to join AVID. AVID made me feel like me. It gave me a different outlook at myself because I was never into sports and wasn't in any, any clubs. So joining AVID was my sense of having a club, a family. It gave me a collective identity at school. I applied to 27 different colleges and universities all around the world. I got into 25. I was waitlisted to one and rejected to one. I got 16 full rides and four partial scholarships. Me coming from a family, I'll be a first generation college student and I thank AVID so much for giving me the opportunity and the exposure to be able to say that and make my family proud that I will be leading them the next generation into going to college and graduating with my degree. Getting to where I am today was not an easy process, but the AVID program definitely helped me out along the way. AVID gave me the confidence to pursue situations that I might not have been totally comfortable with but would have been fit in me in the end. For example, my junior year, I decided that I was confident enough to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and audition for the lead role in our school's musical production, All Shook Up. I attended the first audition and Mr. Sewell and Miss Masonette were amazed with my performance. I ended up getting one of the lead roles named Dennis, who is a weird, quirky, nerdy guy who loved this girl named Natalie. Being in the musical was one of the best decisions that I made in my life and definitely turned my life around for the better. As a result of the musical, I made new close friends, gained self-confidence, and even gained new opportunities such as being asked to be in the Haven Academy of the Arts production of Newsies. Without Miss Lewis as my avid instructor for the first three years, I would not have so much as 
I would not have as much confidence as I have today. For my current fourth year of AVID, I have the amazing opportunity to be in Mr. Whalen's class and is by far one of the most amazing individuals I know. Mr. Whalen is not just any teacher. He sparks a certain joy in each student's eyes as they pass by his classroom, even if they don't have him as a, for as a teacher. AVID is not just a class for those who would like to learn about how to prepare for their future, but how to become a person that they were destined to be. Is that the end of the presentation? Yes, that is. Thank you All very right. much. <laughs> Thank you. Any uh, comments uh, from board members? Yes, Tracy Miller? I, I just want to say I wish AVID could be for everybody. I mean, there's so much good stuff that, that is happening. I mean, listening to the seniors talk about what they've been through, where they're at now, where they're going, I mean, destiny. I mean, that just gave me chills to think about how how far she's come and, and where she's going. I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I am I'm super grateful that our district or our high school supports this and I and I, I wish everybody could be part of it, but I'm glad that we have as many students as we do and such great teachers supporting it. So mm -hmm. it's awesome. Uh, I think Paula had a comment. Yeah. yeah, I did. I just want to put in my two cents and say that, wow, that's really impressive. I, I was around when the first class was instituted <laughs> and that what a difference. So it's amazing, absolutely amazing. That gave me chills too. Congratulations. Thank you. Nancy. Uh, well, I did hear that uh, the award was for school-wide participation as well. And I think that we can't forget that having these successful AVID classes and teachers really affects the entire institution. So I want to give congratulations to everyone who made that happen. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, Emily Lane. You know, I, what I love about AVID, you know, a lot of people when they sign up for AVID their first year, I've heard this from kids, they say, oh, it's great, it'll be a, a free study period or a chance to catch up. And then you find out quickly that it really is a class and there are some, um, you know, wonderful skills and, and there is help on, on homework and things, but there really is curriculum and there is learning um, in, in that AVID class that, that stays with them and makes them successful in all the rest of their classes. Um, so, you know, I, I, my oldest was an AVID, my other two haven't been. So, you know, I think that is just another wonderful thing that we have to, to reach kids at different things. You know, some, it works great for some. I think it could work great for all, but with our impacted schedules, it's always hard. Um, but, you know, I, I just think it's another wonderful way that El Segundo has another piece for, for students. Um, for such a small district, I'm always amazed at the different offerings we're, we're able to have for our students. And it really is a successful program for those that get in there and dive in and, 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 and learn those things. It really prepares them for college. And the AVID teachers, you know, I, I, those AVID teachers, um, I'm <laughs> You know, they take these kids and, you know, I'm, my oldest is um, still working with a teacher right now. So it's, you know, it's a teacher for life. And I just, I really thank these teachers that, you know, they put in summertime and there's training. This is away from their core curriculum that they're also teaching. This is an extra assignment. And, you know, I, I, I know each of these avid teachers really care for these students forever. It's it's not just a, another program. So seeing my my 20 year old who's coming off of his mission shortly, and his avid teacher reached out had a had a thing knowing a calendar that he was coming back and college applications are due and and hit us up before we could even think about it. But hey. I, my calendar thing just went off. Uh, let's get you going on college. You know, that's just, a, it's an amazing program. So thank you to all the AVID teachers. It's more than just a class. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Moore. Yeah, I just wanted to add and build off of what Emily said. Um, 
you know, the high school a few years ago went through a transition in who would be the teachers for the AVID. And under uh, Dr. Fox, she really recruited some great teachers and they didn't skip a beat. It was absolutely seamless in their transition. And uh, I know I was an AVID principal at one time uh, at the middle school level, and it is a tremendous program. And their training is really not just about this is our program and I'm gonna push out content, right? It's what Emily's talking about, building a sense of belonging and community within these classrooms that is truly second to none. It's almost like sports um, where you, you feel part of a team and there's a classroom community and they're caring and mutual respect and an allowance for various points of view and everybody has a place. And so I just really commend uh, Ms. Savage, who's stayed incognito on this call. Uh, <laughs> but congratulations, truly. Um, it's, it, you haven't skipped a beat. You had a huge transition in staff. And the quality of the program has just continued to increase. So congratulations. We just really enjoy our annual report. Thank you. Thank you. Bronca's having some technical difficulties, so she apologizes for that. Um, we totally appreciate your support over the years. I think it's important to note that our team presents best practices and AVID strategies at all of our professional development meetings. And as Emily noted, mentorship truly has a lasting effect on students' achievement in and out of the classroom. So we definitely believe in that. It is an AVID family and we, again, we appreciate your support. Thank you for the time today. Thank you. Ella, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to say that from people I know who are in the class, I think they would all agree that that video really captures the impact that it makes on our students. Um, and then one thing it doesn't address that I thought about was how in all of the underclassmen classes, um, there are avid tutors that upperclassmen get to be these mentors for the younger kids. And I think that just them learning how to work with a different demographic is really beneficial for them as well. Um, and just overall, such a great program on campus. Thank you. Thank you. We also open up our community service projects to the entire community of students and also our college tours. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was such a, a great presentation. I wish we could honor the students and all the work that you're doing in person, but um, we give you virtual applause. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, Neil, uh, let's see if we can hear from you now. No, Ed, hear you. No audio. Oh boy. Now. Yes. Keep talking. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to stop. Okay. <laughs> so I am here to give you an Ed Foundation update. And uh, a couple of you or several of you were on our Ed Foundation uh, board meeting earlier today. And the quick and short is that uh, the Ed Foundation board this morning affirmed, reaffirmed that we are going to be making the full $1.8 million grant for the current academic year. Uh, 1920, and the uh, Ed Foundation Board also reaffirmed that we will be making a $1.8 million grant for the academic year 2021. And the, the of course, um, there's a lot of quotations that, a lot of feelings and sentiments, and as a couple of you know, there were also tears shed um, during the board meeting this morning. And those tears are shed because all of us feel, and we all know the importance of the school district. We know the importance of our children, of course. And as I had said earlier, that I am steadfast in my belief that children and students should not be victims of this. Uh, and so we will continue to do our part in everything that we can. I think that Richard Lundquist quote was the most poignant to me when I spoke to him on the phone last week. And he said, Neil, this is the, this is the least time to start talking about cutting funding to schools. 
this is where we need to stand up and, and, and do provide what we need to provide. And so our plan is, is that we have an endowment that we have been um, sort of bankrolling for a number of years. And that endowment has two purposes. One, it is to potentially be a self-fulfilling endowment, meaning that if we can get it to a certain level, the average interest off of that endowment can be an additional gift to the schools. Uh, but that endowment has to grow uh, fairly significantly for that to happen. But the second reason for the endowment is that it is a rainy day fund. And as Dr. Moore said this morning, uh, it is pouring right now. We are in a thunderstorm. And if there isn't a time to use the endowment for emergency purposes, then there isn't a time to exist. And so our plan right now is that we are going to use potentially about $300,000 of the endowment to meet the $1.8 million grant. And then we know that we have the endowment sitting there to assist us for academic year 2021. Um, the other, uh, of course, the endowment is approximately $3 million. It took about a $250,000 hit in the stock market about five weeks ago. And as of today, we're only $12,000 down uh, in the endowment. So it's a good time for us to do this. Uh, and what it also solidified today coming out of the board meeting of the Education Foundation is the need for all of us, both the district, the Ed Foundation, PTAs, community partners, businesses, corporations, to view ourselves as one team. That, and the mission is schools. And we all come at it from different approaches. The money comes from different places. The money goes to different places. But it's one team. And I know that there's been something bantering around Facebook a lot about how we're not all in the same boat, that we're in a series of storms. I, I, I respectfully disagree. I think that we are in one boat. And we're a bunch of different people with a bunch of different needs, but there is one boat and it's one direction. And that one direction we're all commonly in, which is to save our schools and make sure that our children have the best educational possibilities uh, available, and that is our mission as an Ed Foundation is to present you people uh, with the means to do that. So we're very happy, we're very nervous, but we will do everything that we can to do our part. So thank you for doing what you do, and we'll do what we do. Thank you. We are so grateful, Neil, for the support of the Ed Foundation for all the fundraising that. You will not be able to do, but you're still guaranteeing this for us. And we're just so grateful to help us yeah. as we put our budgets together. Well, uh, you're, you're welcome. And, uh, and I don't envy the task that you have, but we're certainly here to help and do everything that we can. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other comments? I, I know everybody's grateful, but <laughs> all right. Then we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Is uh, there any need to pull any item from the consent? No? I think this is one of our smallest we've ever had. That is, that is true. <laughs> so if somebody could uh, move to approve consent agenda items A through F. I'll move approval. Second. Uh, Approved by Emily Lane and seconded by Nancy Cobb. Any discussion on any of these items? You know, it's uh, uh, the personnel service report. So also, you know, I think it's a sign of the times that I've never, I think each had one, one item on each in my six years, or I have never seen that, which is a true sign of the times and it's unfortunate. Because I know there's, you know, it, it's good as we're in these hard times that we're not, I think we're tightening the belt and making sure things are necessary. And it is unfortunate to see such a small. Yeah, it's typically this is the time when we're hiring new faculty and what have you, but. And extra duties for things going on and it just, yeah. it's a little rough to open those up over the weekend and wow. But yeah. Anyway. 
All right. Then uh, advisory vote, Alice? Aye. Okay. Um, Tracy, your vote? Aye. Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Okay, and I vote aye. So uh, consent agenda is approved by aye. Next, we'll move on to the action items, acceptance of gifts. Emily, if you could read those, please. Yep, in accordance with Board of Education Policy 3290, the board may accept gifts as long as there is no conflict with the education code. And I tell you, I was surprised when I opened it up to still see some of uh, quite a few of these come through. So I thank them at the beginning and I'll thank them at the end. Uh, we've got Kroger, $1,074.71 to the middle school. Box Tops for Education, $6.60 to the middle school. Your Cause, $87 to Arena High School. Phil R. Inc., $2,000 to the high school. El Segundo High School PTA, $400 to the high school. And Project Lead the Way, $15,000 to the El Segundo High School. And seeing no conflicts, I move approval. Uh, seconded by Tracy Miller Zarnicki. Hello. Your advisory vote? Aye. And Tracy? Aye. Your vote? Nancy? Aye. Emily? Aye. Paulette? Aye. And I vote aye. So 5 0, uh, we've passed acceptance of gifts. Next, we have approval of resolution number 20, 2019 20, classified school employee week. Dr. Moore. Yes, it's with a great deal of pleasure that we bring this resolution to you today. Uh, actually, officially, uh, May 17th through the 23rd would be Classified Employee uh, Week. And I do really want to note that during this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic where the buildings may be closed, we still have approximately uh, 50 uh, employees that are actually um, uh, reporting to work on a daily basis, and they are our classified employees. So they are here disinfecting, making sure things are secure, making sure payroll is uh, meeting the deadlines as required, and uh, keeping the boat afloat. So we really appreciate our unsung heroes and our classified employees, and I recommend approval. Emily, if you could read the um, <laughs> therefore be it resolved section. Yep, now therefore be it resolved that the El Segundo Unified School District hereby recognizes and wishes to honor the contribution of the classified professionals to quality education in the state of, Ed of California and in the El Segundo Unified School District and declares the week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2020 as Classified School Employee Week in the El Segundo Unified School District. Thank you. Um, and someone, if you could move to... Uh... I'll move approval. All right. Thank you, Emily. Moves to approve. Second. Second. Seconded by Paulette Claudel. All right. Um, Ella, your advisory vote. Aye. Tracy. Aye. Nancy. Aye. Emily. Aye. And as Dr. Moore, I still want to say, you know, there's also a lot of things that have to go on. There's transcripts. There's all kinds of things that need to continue. And I, I thank the classified um, staff for continuing on because this could really affect some students without their help. Great point. Paulette? Aye. I vote aye. So 5 0 approval of uh, the resolution for classified employee week. And congratulations to the um, classified employees that we honor today. They're just a small representation of all the great employees that we have. Thank you. All right, Informa information pending action, uh, Dr. Moore. Yes, I'd like to call on Chief Business Official Kim Lin to uh, explain uh, the information pending action and what will be brought back for board's consideration in, at, at the last meeting in May. Good, good afternoon, um, yes, so on the May, the next, the next Board of Education meeting agenda, there will be a public hearing as well as a resolution for consideration to raise, <clears throat> excuse me, our um, developer fees. 
developer fees are paid yeah. to the school district for new development, either residential or commercial or industrial, um, to mitigate the impact of um, potentially increased enrollment from, the, from that new development. So we did complete a fee justification study to justify, to show that we are justified in raising our developer fees to the new state limits of $4.08 per square foot for residential property and 66 cents per square foot for, for commercial and industrial property. Okay, so that will come back to us at our next meeting for public hearing and then vote. And then right? so, yeah, so any uh, members of the public who would like to uh, opine on this can submit their comments to the district before our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Informational calendar, Dr. Moore. Uh, yes, for May, uh, kicking us off, we have our uh, virtual town hall that we'll be holding on Monday, May 18th at 3 p.m. Uh, and we will have on the board representing, uh, or on the panel representing our board of education will be our board president, Dr. Nishime, and board vice president, Tracy miller Zarnicki. Uh, certainly other board members are um, able to attend as a participant and watch should you like to, uh, because you would not be um, uh, reviewing the information or uh, weighing in per se. We also have several PTO and PTA meetings with Eagle's Nest on the 19th, uh, and that will be virtual at 615 and Center Street, uh, which will be Friday the 22nd, also virtually at four o'clock. And then we'll have our Memorial Day holiday on the 25th, and our next Board of Education meeting will be on the 26th at 2 o'clock. Okay, thank you. We have the financial statements from the high school ASB for your review. And then we'll move into board members' reports and discussions. So, uh, Paulette, why don't we start with you? Okay. Yes, let's start with me. Oh, I wanted to. Um, congratulate the district and, and Dr. Moore for um, receiving the Project Lead the Way Distinguished District Award for 2019-2020. And we were one of two awards, we were one of only two awards in the state and one of 24 awards in the country. I thought that was really impressive. Good job, everybody. I just really, I, warms my heart and we want oh also i want to thank chevron and the ed foundation for their monetary support of those programs um also i was reading the herald today <laughs> and there was a really nice article about dr moore and what her accomplishments in the district since she's been here very nice and a really nice picture of her family so we got to see the family <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nancy Cobb. Thank you. Um, well, I think that we all heard a lot of uh, information today about proceeding with caution. So I appreciate that our district is doing exactly that. Uh, reopening is going to be something that's going to be handled a step at a time with lots of community input, lots of meetings going on right now. Uh, but we don't have a lot of final answers at this point, so everyone needs to stay tuned and read your communications from the district. Uh, also, just uh, what's going on uh, at SCROC, um, regional occupational centers uh, are really hard hit here because it's very difficult for a lot of their classes to be successful online. And in fact, a lot of the classes that they offer uh, are required to have X number of hours of hands-on, especially if you're talking about something uh, in the medical area, for example. Uh, you don't want somebody going out into the field who has to actually practice the procedures many, many times. So what's happening uh, in the future is that they're looking also at what they can do online, and they're also trying to see with distancing uh, and uh, classes held at small classes different times what they can do as far as the hands-on classes are concerned. 
So they don't have any definitive answers at this point either. We will be having a meeting next week and I'll report back if anything has been concluded after that meeting. So thank you. Thank you. Emily Lang? Uh, I wanted to thank the Ed Foundation. I, I know that's um, you know, a really uh, hard conversation that I think that they've been having and um, but I appreciate them, especially sticking with this year's, being that we kind of budgeted and things are in motion. So especially thankful for that and um, anything they can do. And you know, when I when I was uh, um, representative for the board, you know, it's always interesting to to sit in those meetings and and it, it's not a group of parents. It's not just business. It, it really is a, a quite a a group of diverse expertise and ages and and backgrounds that have really come together to support us and you know I as um, Neil talked about where you know our goal needs to be to make sure that the kids aren't aren't um, affected by this more now more than ever so thank you to them and to all um, that they do for um, for our community um, I wanted to Kind of, and, and Ella probably knows a lot on this one. You know, I'm getting a lot of stuff on graduation. Um, I think because I have a senior, I know a lot of the senior parents, so I'm getting um, bombarded a bit with what are we doing, going to do. And that's what I just want to reiterate that while each of us wants to do a lot and wants, I mean, I, I have a senior. I don't want him to miss that. I'm not just a board member thinking and saying something. I, I have a senior this year. And, and But with that, we are very limited. There are laws and rules and guidelines, and it, it's not as simple as having, you know, certain things done. Because while it seems like it would be simple, you know, there are, um, that what that would imply to the district is a liability. And, and, and having certain while seemingly small events happen that we should or could that people think, um, it, it still brings a group of people together. It, it brings a lot of issues into play that we just can't do as of now. And I, I guarantee you that if, if anything was to change um, from a legal standpoint, that we would jump on doing whatever we can. But as for now, our hands truly are tied on, on any form of a gathering. Um, and it's unfortunate because, you know, I, Emily Lane, heck yeah, I would be down there in a heartbeat. And, and I don't want my son to miss out. But the truth of the matter is, is that it's, it's bigger than just here. And we have to do uh, follow recommendations. So I, I, I truly apologize to the whole community. I don't even, we don't even know who's watching. Hopefully someone's watching. Um, but we do and you know Ella's a senior and I'm sure she's hearing the same things and people want to know and she's getting them bombarded but there really is nothing short of drive-bys with zero interaction that we can do and, and it's just hard and it's unfortunate but as I keep telling my own son you know that's what life is we don't know what's going to happen and you know I am so thankful that this is the situation we're dealing with instead of, you know, God forbid a school shooting or, or something else that other classes have had to deal with. I am very thankful that um, everyone is, you know, relatively safe and healthy and, and, and continuing on. So um, it's, it's really unfortunate and it hurts my heart too, but we really have to follow rules that just sometimes don't seem to make sense, but it is for the, you know, the greater. So I um, apologize, and we are watching Dr. Moore contest that I am asking her all the time, where are we at? Ability, are we ready if we can? We are, um, but our, our hands are tied on it. That's all. Thank you. Tracy? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say I like the signs that got put up at the high school about congratulating our seniors, and I hope that our families will get the cap and gowns that their seniors have and go take some nice socially distant photos out there if they haven't noticed them there. I think uh, that was, I hadn't, I hadn't known that was coming. So seeing that on one of my 5,000 dog walks a day, that was mm -hmm. nice to, uh, to see. Um, really, I just wanna say to all of our 
parents and teachers uh, on administrators, really everybody, keep on keeping on because we are, I think, really two thirds of the way through the distance learning of this school year, right? I mean, if we've only got about a month left of school, we've been in this two months now. Um, I know for some people it's getting easier, some it's trying their patience. Um, but again, like Emily was saying, this is not something any of us saw coming and any of us want to be the paradigm in which we now live. But um, I think just uh, deep breaths and, and patience and, and know that this is a temporary scenario and we will get through it. We can do hard things. We are doing hard things and we're going to come out of it all right. So I miss you all, though, in person. All this computer time is driving me nuts. But <laughs> um, but I'm glad that we we have at least this and that that you know we've picked up the pieces I think really nicely to move forward how we're allowed to move forward so someday this will be all in the past but now we can do this so take care everybody thank you uh, I've attended several meetings via uh, zoom this week and um, and I'm glad that we have at least the technology to continue with those meetings and make some decisions, but just uh, from the facility steering committee, we're moving ahead on all the projects. The high school, middle school, and Richmond Street School security vestibules are the priority, and we're looking for a completion of mid-August for those projects. And I know some of you have been um, wondering about the Richmond Street School windows. Um, one of the problems that we're having is getting materials um, from out of state. I, I don't know about you, but I'm finding mail delivery is super, super slow. Uh, Amazon delivery is delayed. So you can imagine materials deliveries are uh, very slow too. So they're looking at the out of state sources, but the, um, they're going to wait until the windows are actually on their way before the demolition begins and they'll be demoing five classrooms at a time so we don't have all the windows out on the whole building. So I think there's a, a great plan for that. And uh, TLC is 95% completed. So I thought that was very good. And the high school per perimeter fencing is going according to schedule. Um, the other thing I wanted to report is um, the South Bay School Board presidents are meeting weekly. and um, we have all put our name to a letter that has been sent out to all of our state as well as federal legislators. And um, we plan to have our, at least our state legislators attend our Zoom meeting. So this uh, past week we had Andrew DeBlock from Al Murasucci's office uh, attend our meeting. And I think it's a good way to make sure that our um, people in the state understand what our issues are, and so the staffer, at least having a staffer there, they can communicate then to the congressman what our concerns are. And I would say the main thing that we um, were concerned about is having some flexibility, certainly in the spending, and not having the state dictate to us how we should spend the money, but as much flexibility as possible. And the other issue was um, that there's not enough money coming from the federal government. In the previous recession, we received $100 billion from the feds. This year, this time, we're only allocated $18 billion. So we know there's a huge shortfall and mounting expenses for, for our school districts. So um, those are couple of the issues that we pointed out in the letter. And then um, Dr. Moore alluded to the fact that we had a meeting yesterday with, uh, held by Ted Liu and um, Tony Thurman, our state superintendent, was in attendance as well. So uh, it was a good opportunity to ask questions and um, to look at what kind of assistance we can get from the federal and state level as we look to reopen. Um, of course, if you look at the federal allocation from the CARES Act, once again, we're huge losers in El Segundo. 
we're getting $27 per ADA, whereas LA is getting over $600 per student. Uh, I think Inglewood is getting over $1,000 per student. Um, and yet, you know, we have the same concerns for safety and cleaning and all testing and all those things. So um, the fact that it's come down to us based on um, concentration of um, low income students and uh, foster care and homeless students, of course, we end up being um, the losers again in terms of uh, distribution of funds. So that was something all the South Bay schools um, were complaining about. But um, anyway, I, I think um, it's good that we at least know what's happening federally and statewide so that we can begin to uh, coordinate our efforts. And I, I appreciate the other South Bay presidents for wanting to meet weekly and make sure our legislators understand what our needs are. And even though our needs in the South Bay are a little different from statewide, I, I think having them understand what our needs are and where funding issues are and what our concerns are moving forward is is a good thing. So that's me, Dr. Moore. Okay. Um, I want to thank the number of parents who filled out our survey last week. We sent a survey regarding families' commitments to whether they would be returning to ESUSD. And I can report we have uh, a, um, a, uh, a record-breaking number of parents who participated uh, with uh, 1,300 students being represented by these surveys. So overall, that has been a higher yield on a district survey than we've had in the past. So if they have not completed the survey, we encourage you to do so. Uh, of those who uh, have completed the survey, 99% indicate they plan to return to ESUSD, which is great news for us. And that will certainly be news that I will want to share with our um, Moody's and Standards and Poor's when Kim Linz and I um, meet with them uh, on the 22nd when we do our credit rating for Series B sale. Uh, in addition on our survey, uh, we do have parents interested in both a distance learning option, continuing in that um, uh, uh, setting uh, due primarily to issues related to COVID-19. So it could be that there's someone in the home who is uh, immune compromised, or perhaps the student themselves may be immune compromised, or it could be a scheduling issue where that's what works well for that family. Um, in addition, um, uh, I am a member of the LA County Task Force to Reopen Schools, and we've been working diligently on a framework that all school districts uh, throughout LA County can use as a guidance document. So uh, the county document from the County Office of Education will be a guidance document where school districts can um, select various options within the document. However, all school districts within Los Angeles County will be required to follow the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health directives. So the key word there is directive. So like um, Member Lane mentioned, Clerk Lane mentioned, um, uh, she's getting inquiries, I'm getting inquiries, the high school principal's getting inquiries about can't we do something for our students. And it's very confusing for our parents because they see things that might be happening in another state or another county. And so our county is a hotbed of COVID-19 based on the science. So uh, we are well over 40, and it's at times approaching 50% of the cases statewide in Los Angeles County. So if there was a way that I myself could change this, uh, I would pray for that miracle, and I do every night. But we are obligated to follow the directives from the county op um, from the uh, health department. So um, uh, that is for the safety of all, and. Uh, if any of you happen to see uh, Dr. Fauci uh, this morning testifying uh, before the committee, 
uh, at the federal level, um, you know, he's talking about the, the safety risks that states may take if they reopen too quickly. Um, today at the LA County Board of Supervisors, it's important to note that Dr. Barbara Ferrer, the director of the LA County Department of Public Health indicated that it is likely that um, additional stay at home type orders will continue through July. So um, we're looking at any and all possibilities for the reopening of school. Um, one potential option we will be looking at is a face-to-face -face option while um, uh, considering and following the social distance guidelines. But the social distance guidelines are such that it's very restrictive. So I will be sending out a communication appearance uh, to preview um, uh, a potential option that we're looking for. But based on the information we have today, it is not likely that we go back to business as usual in the fall. Um, so I, I just think it's important that we preview that for our parents uh, and we look forward to getting those final documents from Department of Public Health so that we can finalize what initial plans we will be making. It's important to note as well, um, our administrative team is drafting just an initial framework, and then we look forward to collaborating and refinement with our educators within our district uh, and our teachers specifically. Uh, and then we also want to involve parents in this process to see what did we forget? Uh, uh, what, what input can you give to strengthen our plan moving forward? Because at the heart of that plan must remain the safety and welfare of students and faculty and staff. So I wish I had a little more uplifting news. Um, and on top of all of this, we're facing potentially the biggest budget shortfall that the state has ever seen. So thank you, Dr. Nishime, for your advocacy on behalf of El Segundo Unified with the other board presidents in the South Bay. Um, and uh, we will continue to do the best we can and continue to explore any and all possibilities within the guidelines that were provided. So uh, we look forward to the town hall. We currently have 18 questions. So uh, submit more questions. And uh, thank you all for being here. Have a great day and a good rest of the week. Thank you. Uh, we have no oral communication from the public. I don't, you, you haven't sent me anything, have you? I, I think no further public communication. So. In that case, then I will adjourn our meeting at 3.10 and see some, I'll see Tracy at the uh, town hall and the rest of you. Goodbye, everybody. Stay safe right. and healthy. Bye-bye.